Alright, so there was a huge difference between the upload speed with the new internet versus the old one. Before I had a pretty decent, like an okay internet speed. It worked for me and I didn't really care too much. But since I'm like uploading a lot of videos to YouTube and also uploading like the entire projects for these videos up to Google Drive for my editors to edit, it takes a lot of time. Like usually uploading just one of these videos takes me like about eight hours to actually upload it. That that's just something really annoying thing so I felt like I needed to update this to make it a lot faster. I wasn't expecting this big of a difference. I think it was like a 40 gigabyte file that I tested before and that took like five or six hours. Anyway now I have better internet speed. I hope you enjoyed that little montage and now we're gonna get into the actual video. All right, so my first freelance experience, that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today. And let's just say it was not what I expected at all, but I had quite high expectations like going into it. Overall, I would still say that the experience itself was kind of good. I really enjoyed the experience, but it was just not what I expected for it to be at all. If you were gonna ask me like, how do I get my first freelancing job? I would say that I don't really know because I haven't had to do that because they contacted me through this channel. Anyway, I got that job and it was actually a California startup, so a Silicon Valley startup, which is something that I like at the time, I kind of idolized that and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna work for a Silicon Valley startup. And I was so excited I'm watching the show Silicon Valley and like just being really like, that's the place to be and that's where I would want to also do some freelancing work. So I was really excited to see what that would look like and what that would feel like to actually be doing freelance work for a startup like that or to be involved in a startup like that. As soon as I like got into it, I started realizing that it's not as fleshed out as I thought it would be. I went in with really high expectations, like I said. I was expecting to go in there and basically learn a lot of things, like learn about architecture, like how to actually structure something. I was working with Flutter at the time, which was quite new at that time. And I was just like expecting to, uh, for there to be a team of developers and I'd be like going in there, I'd learn how to properly use Git in like a larger organization or like how to uh, structure an app, how to write properly clean code and like how to just do like testing and all this stuff. But as I like started it, I now git cloned the actual repo and then started actually working with it. The first task that I got assigned was like, could you start to refactor this code and like re actually what I would end up doing was like with my quite like beginner eyes at this, I still was able to see like this architecture here is not good at all. Like they have basically just a bunch of different files with lots and lots of code in them. So there's like basically no folders at all and no structure to it, which that then became my first job was like how actually to structure this code up in some sort of way to first of all, like understand it and refactor it. I'm guessing that like refactoring code is something that companies sometimes assign beginners because they want them to just get familiar with the code base. But this was not just refactoring it. It was actually also like structuring it and creating some sort of architectures that we could actually work with, which is something that I didn't know how to do at all. Like I knew loosely how to do it because of uh, we just, I think we just studied it in the software engineering degree that I was doing, but I didn't know at all how to actually do that on a project like that, that would end up being a bigger project, which is what I was expecting this to be like a massive app that would explode and get tons and tons of users. Yeah, so that's the first thing that I had to do. And that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting to actually be like taken under the wing of some more experienced developer and like learn a lot of stuff from them and basically just gain a lot of experience from working on a startup uh, in Silicon Valley because they also had like investors from, I think it was like some of the board members of like Airbnb and things like that. I'm not really sure why they were investing in this, but they were apparently. So they were still like advising or investing in this company. So they were on the board of directors. And so it kind of sounded really, really good. And I, it sounded like this is gonna be something like, this is really gonna turn into something. But as I got started with it, and as the more I kind of got, got into the actual work that I was doing, the more I started to realize that, okay, this right now it's not very structured and they may actually have been hiring me to kind of depend on me to structure this project, which I wasn't ready for at all at that time. And so I kind of felt really unqualified for what kind of work I was actually asked to do and 
And the first meeting that I had with the CEO where he was like, the, the first like interview, I basically just said that I think you have higher expectations of what I know how to do than what I actually know how to do. So I was very like open about that. And that's one of the experience that I have had at least with these sort of things with any type of job really, is that oftentimes we try to talk ourselves up and try to sound like we're a lot better than we actually are. And we try to like, especially if it's like a technical interview type thing, then you kind of try to make it sound as if you know something that someone's talking about that you actually don't understand, even though this is kind of different than a technical actual interview at a bigger company. My experience has been that if I'm open, kind of like weirdly honest in a way, like you say things that you probably shouldn't say, sometimes that can create kind of confidence between you and the employer because they see that you're actually open about the stuff that you don't know, you're willing to actually share that stuff with them, which a lot of people really aren't willing to do. And so that's what I was saying like at the first interview, I was saying that like, I don't think that I know as much as you think that I know, but I would love to get the opportunity to actually try this out. But I wanna say that you probably could find other people that are way more qualified than I am. But if you feel like it, then I would be happy to actually work on this. That's one of the really positive experiences that I had with this freelancing job is basically the CEO of that company. He was really nice and really helpful and really understanding with everything. So even though I felt very unqualified like going into that job, I worked there for five months. And the reason that I quit was, or like that I had to quit, was a couple of different things. But during those five months, he was really, really good at like allowing me to learn things on the job. So like he would really be open to like saying, okay, we're gonna start implementing Scrum and I need your help to basically start to implement this in some sort of way. And then he would ask me to, so basically, could you just do some research on this? And then once we have a meeting in some small, very, very small sense, I became like the second person or the second man. So like it was him and then he was off oftentimes like in the meetings talking to me and like asking things or like we were kind of collaborating in the meeting in a way and then as more and more developers kind of joined in on the project developers that were more experienced and better than me probably also because I was like one of the first ones because he would ask me to do certain things and then we would bring them up in the meeting and it kind of felt like I became a person of like that was sort of in charge even though I was way underqualified to actually be in charge. Well, that like that really gave me some confidence, even though I felt unqualified at the start. So he was a really good part of my experience, or a really big part of what made that experience really good, because he would just allow me to test certain things, and he would be understanding that okay, maybe you haven't worked with Firebase before, so you may have to have a certain learning curve to this, where you try some things out, and then he would actually show me what he'd done, because he actually knew a fair amount of coding, so he. He would build some things out and then show me how he implemented it and then walk me through the code and then I would be able to implement that on my own after that. So he was a really good part. But then the reason that I had to quit after five months was basically because California versus Sweden where I am is the, the time difference is just too big. So I would basically be awake during the day when he would be asleep or they would be asleep. And so towards the end, it was got closer to them actually releasing this app. And at that time, it was a lot of like last minute fixes or, or things that they needed to fix really quickly. And since I would be asleep for eight hours of their day, basically, like it would be like exactly the time that they would be up and working. That would be the time that I would be asleep. So that meant that they would run into problems and they would have to then look to other developers in the team to actually do those things, which meant that I basically woke up in the morning and I had very little to do because they'd kind of handle a lot of the issues that they ran into during the day. And if there was something that I had to do, then I would kind of do that thing. And if I ran into a problem, then I would have to wait for like two days to be able to do it because I would have to wait this day and then I would go to sleep and then wake up in the morning and then they would have like an answer to that question. And most of the time they would actually have solved that problem by the time that I woke up. Yeah, the, the time difference was just a real struggle. So I really understand like they had to let me go, but I really understand that I don't blame them for it. And at that same time, this channel kind of started to blow 
level up. So that was the time when I kind of felt like I probably want, don't want to do this anymore anyway, even though I would have still continued if they would have let me continue. But since they didn't, I was kind of happy to just let that go and kind of focus all my energy on this channel. And at the same time, I actually decided to drop off my college degree for uh, computer science. That kind of all came to one single point where I was like, okay, I'm gonna do YouTube now. Either it's gonna work or I'm gonna crash and burn and I'm gonna have to do something else, find another job or go back to school. That's essentially my experience. I think it's a really good experience and it's something that like as soon as I got that job, I was just so excited to be able to code and get paid to actually code and also just to learn things because as more and more developers started to join the team, more and more stuff I would be able to actually learn from them by looking at the code that they were writing. So had I come in at like a later stage when there would have been more developers on the team and like more of a structure to it, then I think that my learning experience would have been a lot better. Right now I didn't learn too much with it. I learned a little bit and I learned a little bit more about like using Git properly, but not really because they weren't using Git properly. Also like testing things, I didn't learn any of that because we didn't do any tests, especially in startups. But it's still like a lot of things that I would have wanted to gain from that experience that I didn't quite gain. But some things that I didn't expect to gain that I did gain, which was like the understanding of feeling like, I think there's like this thing called imposter syndrome where you feel like you're not qualified for something that you're actually qualified for and that's kind of what I was feeling but I also wasn't really qualified and even still I was able to like with this CEO that I was really connecting with he really showed that like it's very likely that you'll get some sort of job where you'll feel like you aren't really qualified and at the start you may not actually be qualified for that job but the more and more that you work there the more you qualified you get. Qualified isn't really the right word because when you start a job you're probably qualified for that job but as you start you don't really know anything you don't know about the code base you don't know where to start writing your code you don't know how it works and it's really like overwhelming to see a giant code base for a project and I think that a lot of times companies that hire new people for that sort of stuff they're really like understanding with the fact that you won't actually know how to do everything and you will be kind of slow in the beginning that's kind of what I learned that oftentimes in the beginning phase they're kind of expecting you to not understand what's going on or like to need a lot of like guidance or coaching in order for you to actually become an effective programmer if that makes sense. So that's my experience. I think that if I wasn't doing YouTube I'd probably still be doing freelance work in some sort of way because I do really enjoy the freedom that it kind of allows uh, that you can work from anywhere you are and you just need your laptop and in general freelance work is really flexible and anyway I really enjoy that. I kind of would struggle probably to be tied down into a single office spot even though I, there's part of me that's like uh, interested in seeing what it would be like to go into an office every single day and like have your space there where you work at a bigger company and you write code and you like work with other people in a team uh, to develop something. I still have that slight urge to kind of try that out at some point but for now I'm super happy doing YouTube and I think that freelancing is probably still a better path for me. I don't know if this made any sense or if it like helped you understand what to expect from your first freelancing experience or maybe it helped you figure out if freelancing is something that you should try because my experience is of course really really unique to me but I think that maybe some people are interested in hearing it and uh, I didn't mind sharing it so anyway. <laughs> But I think that maybe it could potentially have some sort of value. I hope it does in some way. I'm not sure what it will turn out like since I haven't edited the, this, this video yet. And now I've just been rambling, it feels like, for the past like 20 minutes now. But yeah, I hope it gave you something in some way. And I hope I'll see you in the next one tomorrow.